Tutto è santo, tutto è santo, tutto è santo. Non c'è niente di naturale nella natura, ragazzo mio. Tientilo bene in mente. Dogfish had began about 13 years ago now, uh, we had the same mission that we have today, which is off-centered ales for off-centered people. We really have never been interested in catering to the, to the status quo and brewing the kinds of beers that are already dominating uh, the marketplace, nor did we assume that we would ever be brewing for a majority of the beer drinkers out there, and I doubt that we ever will. Because we've been playing around with non-traditional brewing ingredients since the day we opened, uh, we get a, a large number of unsolicited pitches uh, from people asking us to try out uh, an ingredient in a beer that they think would be a great idea. Uh, one was we, uh, we got cloudberries from the Arctic Circle once and brewed a beer with them and kind of didn't do our homework on what the costs would be and after freight and all the importing uh, fees we would have had to charge I think $19 per snifter at our pub just to break even so that was a really fun project and the beer was, was amazing uh, but it probably wasn't sustainable as far as something we could release on the marketplace. One of the, the, the greatest that we got was from uh, John, the, the, the wood flooring salesman, who happened to be a hardcore dogfish head beer guy. Wood has a really central role in our, in our brewery, in our company. Our menu at our pub is based around this big open wood grill where we use hickory and oak logs to cook our food. The interior of our pub, the decor is, is centered around this wood that I got from a, a salvaged barn that was, uh, that was along the Connecticut River up in New England. Our artwork, I, I, I found this 19th century wood stamp set and we uh, do our proprietary doggy font uh, and do a lot of our artwork and packaging uh, from this wood uh, stamp set. I think though the, the probably the most central way that we use wood here uh, historically has been with beer. And I think Dogfish Head was among the first craft breweries to wood age beers. Uh, starting in 1996 with our Immort Ale, which is made with uh, maple syrup from my dad's farm in Massachusetts, Juniper Berry, uh, peat smoked barley, and French uh, oak. So wood has really been central to what we've been doing in our brewery and we use it as an ingredient, as something to magnify the complexity of our beers. This particular wood is quite unique. Uh, first and foremost, there are a lot of similar species between the continents of Africa and South America. And many people are familiar with the uh, species called frankincense. This is the South American cousin of frankincense. The Palo Santo, I learned, is also used by a few small artisanal wineries in uh, Chile and Argentina. Um, while I haven't visited any of these, I took immediate interest, and because I have personal interest in the world of craft beer, I started to wonder, well, if it works with wine, why can't it work with beer? I immediately thought of dogfish. I remember the first time I saw a dogfish beer. It was at the uh, Good Love Lounge in Baltimore. It was their copper ale, which I don't even think they make anymore. But um, it was quite good. And from there on out, I knew every time I saw a new dogfish beer, I had to try it. Over the course of time, I got to know that they were uh, more pioneers in the way of uh, trying new combinations, interesting combinations of ingredients to, uh, to yield um, interesting, uh, very uh, bold beers. This particular species has been coveted through the ages for all the medicinal properties and all the physical properties that it possesses. It's one of the densest woods in the world. It's, it will sink in water, and it's one of the very few woods that will sink in water. It's harder than almost any other type of wood out there, and it has a high resin content, and this resin has been used throughout the ages 
to treat various ailments from uh, stomach problems to even a pre-Renaissance cure for syphilis. We try not to really ever brew anything twice. This is one exception because this beer is going to go into full-scale production at the beginning of uh, 2008. Um, so we're brewing a smaller size batch, about four barrels today, about roughly eight kegs, um, to just make sure we've got that recipe absolutely dialed in with some of the few changes that we decided on after tasting the last batch. And then this recipe will get passed on um, to our lead brewer, Brian, uh, who runs uh, the brewing production side of things at our Milton Brewery. And he'll then take that recipe and ramp it up to his 100 barrel system, which produces 200 kegs at a, um, a batch. Um, and he'll have to change the recipe somewhat to fit his um, process up there. It's a different brew system, much larger. It's hopped with uh, a couple of additions of warrior hops and um, as well as some glacier and some palisade hops. What that'll contribute is a nice, somewhat spicy, fruity, floral aroma to the beer. It's a very uh, high gravity brown ale which uses chocolate malt, crystal malt, and black malt, as well as some wheat for a little added texture and complexity. We're using a, a Scottish ale yeast strain, um, which will be a, a little bit fruity uh, and uh, quite delicious.